Have you ever wondered what it would be like to be in a zombie apocalypse? And to be hunted by vampires at the same time? Then the Extinction, Extinction Parade, Parade is for you. you. Not interested. Well, too bad. We're going to tell you all about the visual rhetoric anyway. between the current world and events of the past, as well as build a world that has a consistent lore. There are multiple references to historical events and historical landmarks throughout the novel, such as World War I, World War II, the Eiffel Tower, the French Revolution, and Pompeii. Max Brooks uses illusion to incorporate vampires and zombies, which are fantasy elements, into the world that we are familiar with and persuade us of their existence. Another visual rhetorical device Max Brooks uses is a contrast between colors, as well as the selection of colors. Each color represents or symbolizes certain themes or moods, and often these colors have multiple meanings as well. For example, the color red represents love and beauty, but at the same time it represents anger and hatred. In the Extinction Parade, Max Brooks uses two main contrasting colors, blue and red. Brooks uses the color blue to represent the night, and does so on purpose to symbolize the darkness and despair of the current world state. As I mentioned before, Max Brooks uses blue and red to contrast each other in order to highlight something within the frame. For example, the bright orange red fire of destruction pops out to the audience because it contrasts with the dark blue night sky. Also, Brooks demonstrates how arrangement can be used to draw the viewer's attention to certain aspects of each scene. There are many scenes in the graphic novel that put the zombies and vampires up in the foreground, with the destruction of the cities in the background. This is purposely used to draw your immediate attention towards the zombies and vampires, and slowly draw your attention to the mass destruction that is behind the hordes of zombies.